If there is one Total War game that has punched way above its weight, it has to be Total War Attila. I mean, imagine being the half-sequel to the in-2015, much-behated Rome 2, shipping with awful performance issues, a very specific campaign that in the beginning appears a lot less sandboxy than other Total Wars, and that apparently you need futuristic hardware to run the game at an acceptable rate. Attila was sadly only given about one year of support from Creative Assembly, but that means nothing, nothing, when true hearts and minds come together to work on projects they love. And you know what? Just like me, it turns out that a lot of people actually love Attila, despite its blemishes. For a game that somehow ended up being in my eyes the last true historical title, for now at least, it is somehow poetic that it's also the last true, in my opinion anyway again, massively modded Total War game with insane overhaul mods that completely changed that game. And this love and dedication is what I want to show you here today. Total War games are known for their total conversion mods, meaning mods that essentially don't just add or change smaller aspects, but that plays around with time periods and settings. Attila might just be the modern Total War game most people have decided to toy around with in this sense, and frankly for good reason. It's a damn good game with some banging mechanics. And as is tradition, many modders who love Attila are not necessarily the biggest fans of Rome 2. At least they felt they could improve upon it. One of these mods is not just one mod, but a whole bunch of them dedicated to virtually every single era of Rome, namely the mod series Rome Era. Rome Era takes Attila's various campaigns, be it the Grand Campaign, the Last Roman, or the Charlemagne Campaign, and transports them into various other Roman time periods, from all the way back in the early Roman BCs to the Middle Ages and the Holy Roman Empire. This means you'll have campaigns that allow you to play the likes of Western or Eastern Francia, return Rome to its former glory as Aurelian in a very own Empire Divided campaign for Attila and not Rome 2, and my personal favorite, the Vi Victis campaign, the earliest of them all, where you get to play as the Roman Consul and his generals fighting for the young Roman Republic, which is a totally separate faction in this mod. What's so fascinating about this one, if we compare it to the Attila-based game for example, is that it completely turns the entire experience on its head. You are now one of the smallest factions in the game. In fact, your Roman faction doesn't have any cities to speak of at all. Instead, you must unite Italy and the West under the banner of the Roman Senate. And you must do so by not just attacking your Italian neighbors, but by actively defending against massive Gallic hordes coming to invade you, just like they did historically. Rome Era, then, is a mod series unlike any other I've seen, as it offers so much content, so much variation in time periods, and all with the help of other modders too, like the unit models from the Rome HD mods for Rome 2, or Anno Domini, which lets every one of these eras be depicted with historical and authentic units. It's by no means a finished mod series, but it's here and open to play right now, and if you want a bit of Attila love for your Roman campaigns, then you need to check these out. But there's more ancient Roman fun to be had here, of course, because Classical Empires is hyper-focusing on their massive overhaul mod that begins in the middle of the Second Punic War. Classical Empires makes use of the Attila Grand Campaign map to essentially bring that OG Rome campaign back to life in the Attila format, now with governors and fertility and all that good jazz. I think the best thing about Classical Empires is how far it goes. Every unit has been remade, every faction updated, new technologies, all new buildings, era-appropriate factions and so on and so forth to create an immersive experience in this much earlier period. I think it's a fantastic effort frankly, although the mod creators made two choices in particular I can't stand. The camera tilt on the campaign map has been changed, which to me messed up the flow of the campaign, slows down the game because there's more on the screen and it just doesn't fit with the Attila map projection in my opinion. Second is the weird effects around Roman cities in particular, which just looks like something messed up the pixels. The idea was to give the game a more ancient and marble-like look I suppose, but it just doesn't look good, and you can achieve a much better effect by using a separate mod, although it's not compatible sadly, that restores Roman style walls to Roman cities. So guys, amazing mod, but please fix these two aspects. It wouldn't be an Attila appreciation video without the massively ambitious Fireforged Empire, an overhaul mod for the Attila Grand Campaign itself, although it turns back time about 30 years to the actual first invasions of the Huns in Eastern Europe. The changes here might not be as immediately flashy, but they are there and will make themselves shown. Not only do we have 900 new units to play with, but the mod is as historically accurate as possible in terms of accurate characters, their names, all the factions present and so on, and we even have a host of new events, invasions, rebellions and more that will send surprises your way into this already brutally difficult and immersive campaign. 
There's a bunch more religions that will threaten to disrupt your empire now, and I'm particularly a fan of the new government edicts, which significantly change the way you play and go about dealing with various challenges where needed. In other words, if you have been looking for a fresh and exciting new take on the regular Attila campaign, Fireforged Empire is a must-play. Moving away from the Roman time period now, Attila has become somewhat of a centerpiece for modders toying around with the early and late medieval periods. There's an entire mod dedicated to the rise of Islam, for example, an extremely unique campaign that depicts the rise of the Arabs in the Middle East and beyond. We have the Viking Age, which simulates the Viking invasions on the Charlemagne map, and we have a series of mods known as Anno Domini, and there's particularly one of these I want to tell you about right now. You see, very few if any medieval mods for Attila actually deals with that legendary time period surrounding 1066. In other words, the start of the High Middle Ages, the tumultuous period in Britain and Iberia, and the Byzantine and Cuman invasions. This is exactly what Anno Domini 1051 wants to do something about. And my friends, this is going to be a major one. Anno Domini 1051 is still in its early development stage, but one of the features that gets me extremely excited here is the fact that the team is hard at work at creating new custom cities for this time period. This means that our medieval towns and cities will look distinctly authentic and wholly unique from their Charlemagne counterparts. But even better, these new forts surrounding the city center will hopefully in the future be usable and manable by your units. In other words, what we have here is a kind of simulated multi-tier siege layout that really reminds me of Medieval 2's fortresses and citadels. The team could really use your help though, so if you or anyone you know has experience with modeling or importing, do check out Anno Domini's Discord. Their link is in the description. The passion and skill here is just unbelievable. The fact that this is a mod that is in early development 8 years after the game's release is just wild, and I wish the Anno Domini team the absolute best of luck in their efforts to create the ultimate 11th century mod centered on Charlemagne's focused map. However, there is one mod completely dominating not just Attila, but arguably the entire Total War franchise these days in terms of significance and innovation, if nothing else because of how much it changes the game. And that is Medieval Kingdoms 1212 AD, the quintessential late medieval mod for, let's face it, any game ever made. I'm serious, this mod is insane. An actual crusades mechanic, basically every medieval faction you can think of, a fully operational Holy Roman Empire system, and on top of that, individual nation formation missions that actually work? Are these modders gods? On top of that, we have so many new and beautifully modeled units, a soundtrack borrowing music from other medieval sources like Medieval 2, and completely new creations like trebuchets. The mod even has in-game achievements specifically made for that mod, which is just wackly awesome. And what the future holds is arguably even better. A new campaign map where more cities are added and accurately placed, and where even more factions are introduced. Truly, there are few campaigns I've had as much fun with as Medieval Kingdoms, and I think that's for a good reason. It's overall an extremely polished, deep, and engaging experience that keeps surprising you, whether it's through mechanics like the fantastic single city and extra building slot province system, a new and amazing population system, or historical events like the Mongol invasion. Medieval Kingdoms is a mod I cannot recommend highly enough, and if you haven't already, this needs to be on your list. However, MK1212 can be improved upon, and I think an extremely interesting way of spicing things up a little is through the mod Realistic Ranged Overhaul for 1212. In fact, for being such a small mod, it does something extraordinary. Aiming at being realistic, this mod makes ranged units absolutely deadly and making every battle a question of who can make the best use of their archers. This means that playing in the east is especially dangerous, since the Turks and Mongols in particular love their horse archers. But javelin men and various longbowmen are equally important to watch out for and capitalize on. But it doesn't end there. The mod even implements completely new supply wagons, which allows you to use its ability a limited number of times in a battle to refill your archers or trebuchets ammunition. It's such a small but massively important mod that makes the biggest difference. And you can even choose your archer's way of shooting, whether straightforward or over units in front of them, for example, which just feels like such a no-brainer at this point. But it's awesome. It's such a small but massively important mod that makes the biggest difference, and even though it could use some tweaking and balancing, perhaps in how available archers actually are, or how expensive they are in the campaign, the mod is revolutionary. The same creator also made a cavalry work mod, which I've yet to truly dive into, but it's right there on the workshop if you wish to relearn how to use cavalry in MK1212. Then we have Crusader Wars, which does something absolutely amazing. What makes Crusader Wars so beyond amazing? is that it combines these two games, and it makes each have an impact on the other. And let me show you exactly how this works. 
when finding ourselves in CK3, as we often do, and enter into battle, as we often do, there is now an option that wasn't there before, namely the sword icon. Clicking that will suspend CK3 and open the Attila launcher. Heading into Attila, we now have to go to custom battles, choose Crusader Wars, and then click on the swords again. This finally takes us to the battlefield, and you'll find that the armies aren't only loosely inspired by your CK3 makeup, but they're actually as closely based as possible. And we'll get back to that right away, but I just want to make sure you understand how special this is. We can now actually combine these two amazing games in a way that's never been done before, and I think that's worth really taking in. Now, this is the mod's major concept, but there's actually a whole ton of stuff that goes on behind the scenes to make this as immersive an experience as possible, and it's actually so ho oh, ho oh, darn good. First of all, perhaps the largest and most awesome feature is that Crusader Wars specifically plays nicely with two specific Attila mods in particular, namely the Anno Domini 768 compilation, which is a host of new units for the Age of Charlemagne time period, which of course relatively neatly coincides with CK3's early start date in A67. In addition, once you get to 1066 or indeed begin there, you're gonna wanna download the unit models for Medieval Kingdoms 1212, because this mod actually integrates it with CK3. In other words, Crusader Wars actually enables the game to take into account the time period you're in, allowing us to master units in Total War with what we're seeing in CK3. And to me, who believes that immersion and a fluid transition between the two games like this is essential, it makes the whole thing even better and more impressive. In action, this means that if you're playing as the Norwegians in the Viking Age, your units will look like this. While if you're jumping 200 years and are still aching for that English crown, you'll be looking much more appropriately High Middle Ages vibes. It's a stroke of genius, honestly. And the same goes as far as unit models allow for this across the board, meaning you'll see the same evolution in Spain, Germany, Byzantium, Persia, and so much more. And finally, as a crowning celebration on the horizon of Total War and Attila in particular, we have the Dawnless Days, a mod that is completely and totally overhauling the entire game to create the most complete and deep Lord of the Rings experience since Third Age. Dawnless Days has been out for a while in terms of offering amazing custom battles set in this universe, currently representing or planning to represent virtually every important unit and faction, but perhaps most importantly is that upcoming campaign mode. And ever since Total War modders cracked the code when it comes to Attila's campaign map, they've been hard at work making the next massively anticipated update, namely a truly grand Lord of the Rings campaign. Work is well underway and that's fantastic to see, and even though we'll have to keep being patient, the fact that modders, regular Joes like you and me, are doing this out of pure passion is nothing short of inspiring. Indeed, this last point goes for every single mod listed in this video and beyond, but the fact that Attila in particular is experiencing nothing short of a gameplay and experience diversity renaissance is just beautiful. And if there's one modern Total War game that deserves all this love, I think in fact it is Attila. A diamond in the rough, but a diamond nonetheless. Modders are doing fantastic things in Attila, and it allows this long since officially abandoned game to remain alive and well, perhaps even more so than ever before. But what's your opinion on Attila and these mods? Have you played any of the ones mentioned here, or will you after watching this video? Let me know in the comments, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers!